Good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast of Ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Remember, you can always visit us online at mymdi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. If you're not a Daily Torah channel subscriber, click the subscribe button so you never miss a single episode. Also, feel free to leave comments and let us know what you're learning so far. Today we continue our special daily Torah series on God's plan for humanity leading up to the fall holy days and ending with the beginning of the new Torah cycle that begins after the last great day of the Feast of Tabernacles. So sit back, enjoy the series, and have a blessed holy day season. Good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Today we are in part 20 of our series on God's plan for humanity, and as always, I pray that you have been enjoying this series so far. Write us and let us know what you're getting out of it. You can always visit us and contact us at mymdi.org. So yesterday we discussed the Feast of First Fruits, also called the Resurrection Day, and how it ties into our amazing future. Today we are going to discuss how the Feast of Shavuot, or Pentecost, helps us to be empowered and helps us to purify ourselves and remain without sin. So as I mentioned yesterday, if we remain faithful and committed to him and we adhere to his teachings, his commands and his statutes, honor his feast days and love one another as he does, we shall be as he is. Notice this in 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 9 if you have your bibles with you. Uh, turn to 1 John chapter 3 verses 1 through 9. Behold how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. For this cause the world doesn't know us because it didn't know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it is not yet revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him just as he is. Everyone who has this hope sits on him, has this hope set on him, purifies himself, even as he is pure. Let me repeat. Everyone who has this hope set on him, Yeshua, purifies himself, ourselves, even as he, Yeshua, is pure. Continuing on in John, it says, Everyone who sins also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. As I went over this, I think in one of our earlier um, episodes, I said sin is lawlessness, or that other word for lawlessness is Torahlessness. That when we forget the Torah, when we think the Torah is done away with, it has not been done away with, that sin is lawlessness. And you know Paul or John continues, he says, you know that he was revealed to take away our sins and in him, Yeshua, is no sin. Therefore, whoever remains in him does not sin. Whoever sins hasn't seen him, neither knows him. And if you remember that word know from the Hebrew word yada means to know him in an intimate way, just like a wife and a husband know each other. 
And then John continues. He says, Little children, let no one lead you astray. He who does righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. To this end, the Son of God was revealed that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever is born of God doesn't commit sin. Because his seed, Yeshua's seed, remains in us. In him, in we, he cannot sin because he, we are born of God. But how, my friends, how do we purify ourselves and remain without sin? This is what Shavuot is all about. Shavuot, the Hebrew word for Pentecost. Shavuot means weeks, feast of weeks. The answer is we can't, but he can in us. Now, if we continue back in Leviticus, we are instructed to count 50 days to the day of Shavuot, also called Pentecost. That's where 50 comes from, 50 days. But we are to count 50 days to the day of Shavuot, also called Pentecost, and also called the Feast of Weeks, it is a high holy day in a statute forever. So notice this in Leviticus 23, starting in verse 16, it says, You shall count from the next day after the Shabbat, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Shabbatot shall be completed, seven periods of of weeks, Sabbath. Seven Shabbatot shall be completed even to the next day after the seventh Sabbath or Shabbat. You shall number 50 days and you shall offer a new meal offering to the Lord. You shall bring out of your habitations two loaves of bread for a wave offering made of two tenth parts of ephah of fine flour. They shall be baked With yeast. Notice, these breads are baked with yeast. Now remember, we just discussed the days of unleavened bread, which pictures uh, having sinlessness in our life, not having any sin because leaven is a type of sin. But here during Shavuot, we are to bake these two loaves with yeast for first fruits to the Lord. And as he continues on saying, the Kohen or the priests shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord with two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priests or the Kohen. And then he continues in verses 20 and 21. He says, you shall make proclamation on the same day. There shall be a holy convocation to you you shall do no regular work. Okay, so it's it's proclaimed as a holy day. This is a statute forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Again, this holy day has not been done away with. Yeshua kept this day. The disciples kept this day. Years, decades after Yeshua was resurrected and the early church kept this day, it wasn't changed until AD 325 when Pentecost was changed to, um, well, East, actually Passover was changed to Easter. Uh, Pentecost uh, was still kept, but there's not much emphasis on it really anymore. You don't really hear about it in your churches today that Pentecost is, is still being kept. So, on this day of Shavuot, of Pentecost, um, what, what happened? Now, Yeshua, he told the disciples before his sacrifice that the Father would send the Counselor, the Spirit of Truth, who would teach them all things. Notice he says this in John 15, verses 26 and 27. Yeshua says, When the Counselor has come, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify about me, and you will also testify because you have been with me from the beginning. So this Spirit of truth that Yeshua said the Father was sent came 
like a whirlwind on the day of Pentecost, the day of Shavuot, and immediately the apostles started to testify in different languages so powerfully that in one day, 3,000 new believers committed their lives to Yeshua. Now notice this in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 1, it says, Now when the day of Shavuot had come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came from a sky a sound like the rushing of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Tongues like fire appeared and were distributed to them. One sat on each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability to speak. And then the apostle Peter, a common man like many of us, but when filled with the Holy Spirit, he went on to give the most powerful testimony ever given by a mortal. And quoting Joel, he said, it will be in the last days, says God. I'm reading from Acts 2, starting in verse 17. He says, it will be in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Yes, and on my servants and on my handmaidens in these days, or on those days, I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. He, my friends, is speaking of us. He's speaking to us. He goes on to say that this promise is given to us and to our children. But there are conditions First, we must repent, be immersed in the name of Yeshua, and then we will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Remember, I went through these conditions, how each one of these holy days leads us to this time. Each is going in order. As a new babe, a new believer, we must repent, be immersed, go through our Red Sea. You know, we come out of Egypt and we're immersed in the name of Yeshua. And then we will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit when hands are laid upon us. Oh, my friends, are you beginning to see the awesome plan of God for you and all humanity who accept Yeshua and commit to his ways? This is our future. But there's so much more. But that's all the time we have for today. So tune in tomorrow. And we're going to continue this. Don't forget to share this exciting message with your friends and your family on social media. And consider becoming a monthly sponsor if this message has blessed you. So until tomorrow, visit us on mymdi.org. And shalom aleichem. Peace, my friends. We'll see you tomorrow.